Trust is Salesforce's number one value, and the company invests in multiple layers of people, processes, and technology to protect both the data and experience of its customers. But no matter how robust the Salesforce platform is, you still need skilled individuals to configure, maintain, and upgrade your environment in a way that avoids some common pitfalls. Hi, I'm Mike, a technical account manager at Salesforce, delivering you great content on behalf of Salesforce Ben. One of Salesforce's most powerful aspects is how flexible the platform can be. Admins, developers, consultants, and apps are able to use a host of native features and custom code to meet the needs of almost any organization. But if all these enhancements and customizations aren't built or architected in a scalable way, then this is where issues can start to creep in. With great power comes great responsibility. So here are five tips for ensuring your Salesforce org remains healthy and with lots of happy users. Even if you've not put a single line of custom code into your org, it's still possible to run into performance issues. One of the most popular ways of doing this is known as data skew. This is where you have a large number of child records, let's say 10,000, associated with one parent record. For example, you may decide to park unassigned contacts under one account called unknown company. This can cause issues like record locking and sharing issues, which you don't want. Strategies for tackling this can be found in the large data volumes module in Trailhead. You can find this in the links in the description below. Most customers have already switched on multi-factor authentication. This is where users need something they know, like a password, as well as something they have, like a mobile phone or digital key in order to log in. But if you are one of the few customers still to set up MFA or enterprise grade single sign-on, you risk leaving yourself exposed to malicious third parties. Salesforce offers a wealth of resources on their trust website to help customers get fully compliant. And you can also find Salesforce Ben's detailed blog post with everything you need on the topic in the description below. While all the information in your Salesforce environment or org is kept separate from other customers, it physically sits on hardware shared with thousands of other customers called a pod or instance. Think of the instance as an office building and your org as an office within that building. Your office shares water and electricity supply with the other offices in that building in the same way your org shares hardware resources with other orgs in the pod. So in both cases, the service provider needs to ensure there is sufficient supply of shared resources for all tenants and that no one tenant is able to consume resources beyond what is reasonable and which risks degrading the service to other tenants. This is where governor limits come in. Governor limits are usage caps enforced by Salesforce to prevent any org's custom code or processes monopolizing shared resources. As an example of one of the limits, you're not allowed to have more than 10 Apex programming transactions happening at the same time that take longer than five seconds each. Governor limits are a big topic in their own right. So see this video's description for links to a Salesforce Ben article on this topic and to Salesforce's official developer guide. Recursion means something that repeats itself and recursive triggers are a fairly common issue when customizing your org. This is where you might have an automated process that ends up triggering the same process to run multiple times. It's not very good to do this and it can cause your org to hit one of Salesforce's governor limits. There are practical steps you can take to avoid this, but part of the solution is working within a team and thoroughly testing new functionality in a sandbox ahead of deployment. A customer once told me that the best thing about Salesforce is how customizable it is, and the worst thing is how customizable it is. Some of the choices you make now will have consequences for how your org operates for years to come, because certain decisions can be cost prohibitive to unpick later. One of the most common issues is when skilled developers rush to write custom code without exploring native functionality and apps first. For example, I've seen a customer that was unable to use certain new native functionality like Einstein Activity Capture because of how heavily they'd customize some of the objects that service relies on. Ideally, when looking for a technical solution to a fully scoped out business requirement, you should look for solutions from the following sources in this particular order. Native Salesforce functionality, apps from the Salesforce App Exchange, and saving custom code as a last resort. I've only touched on a few of the potential pitfalls when heavily customizing your Salesforce environment, but as long as you proceed with caution and test thoroughly, 
you shouldn't go far wrong. I'd be interested to know in the comments any other tips you'd recommend to keep an org healthy and high performing. So feel free to share your ideas in the comments. And thanks for watching.